Hi, I'm John Line. How does science enter our lives? In a world of special interests and competing agendas, where does science fit? How does what we know about science influence our self-understanding? These are some of the questions that inspire those of us who study the rhetoric of science and technology. Scientific questions arise in so many ways in public policy, in medicine and health, in education and elsewhere. How can citizens best understand the claims of science and the arguments about them? All of the traditional questions about the function of rhetoric and communication apply here, and we bring them to bear on matters related to scientific discourse. Several members of our faculty do work that helps us understand the rhetoric of science. Gordon Mitchell looks at science through the frame of public argument and public policy from national defense policy to climate science to policies affecting medicine and health. His status as a leading scholar in the field of argumentation is a tremendous asset to Professor Mitchell's work, as is his secondary appointment in the field of translational medicine. This is the study of how medical science is best translated into medical practices and procedures and into public understanding. The rhetoric of medicine and health is a fast expanding frontier for rhetoric of science. And Pittsburgh's famous research centers for medical research afford growing opportunities. Olga Kuchinskaya studies how evidence of risk is communicated to the public, the seen and unseen risk posed by exposure to toxins in the environment and by the production and use of energy. She approaches her research within a broad social frame and draws on science and technology studies in order to understand how material conditions converge to create risk and to shape our awareness of it. Her book, The Politics of Invisibility, recently published by the MIT University Press, examines the long-term risk created by the events at Chernobyl. And as it happens, the risk associated with nuclear power have more recently been in the news with the disaster that occurred a few years ago at Fukushima in Japan and Professor Kuchinskaya has been on the case. She's concerned with how experts articulate risk and how they both foreground and occlude matters of concern to the public. But who are the experts? Joanna Hartelius does work on the way those we call experts become qualified and credible in the eyes of the public. What makes someone an expert? Is that a designation only for those with university or scientific credentials or can Ordinary citizens claim expertise in those things they have experienced and lived with. These are key considerations in explaining how expertise works rhetorically, especially in contexts where public understanding is important. Professor Hartelius also studies the rhetorical uses of digital technologies. My own interest in rhetoric of science focuses on the rhetorical and philosophical resources we have for understanding the claims and aspirations of science, especially as they encounter different audiences. When scientists present arguments to their peers or to their counterparts in other fields or to the public. I, for instance, had a long running interest in the way that matters of biology are configured and reasoned about. And I found the conjunction of rhetoric and philosophy particularly useful in framing understandings of health and medicine. The seminar I teach in philosophy of medicine for Pitt's MA program in bioethics allows me to interact with medical professionals and grad students from a number of fields, including communication and law, and to lead investigations into contexts in which the very nature and meaning of medical knowledge is unresolved or contested. The palette of resources available to our graduate students spans a number of departments and programs. In fact, some who investigate issues in the rhetoric of science have been able to get a second MA degree that furthers their interest in bioethics, for example, or history and philosophy of science. But rhetoric of science is also connected with other focal areas in the communication department, such as argument, public address, media, and culture. And we encourage the cultivation of those connections.